Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at the latest update for Topaz Gigapixel 7. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Let's see what's new in this latest update for Gigapixel 7 version 7.3. The first thing I want to point out is we can change the interface from a light to a dark interface. Right now I'm using the dark interface. If you don't like the dark interface, we can use a light interface. And to do that, what you need to do is come up and click on Topaz Gigapixel AI, click on Preferences, and then what you want to do is go to Settings. Now, if your settings aren't open like you see mine here, see this little uh, triangle drop down? Just click on that and then you'll see all the different options in here. What you want to do is click on general and you'll notice we have color scheme right now. It's set to dark and then click on this drop down and you'll notice we have light system color scheme. It'll honor the color scheme of your system or dark. If you click on light, you won't see light yet. You have to click save. And now we have a light interface. So if you like a light interface, you can change it. To change it back, just come back up here. Click on Topaz Gigapixel AI. Click on Preferences. I'll change this back to dark because I prefer the dark and click Save. And now we're back to the dark interface. So that's something new. We've had this in uh, Photo AI a few updates back, but now it's here in Gigapixel 7. Another new feature deals with the crop tool. So if I click on the crop tool, this new feature deals with rotating the crop. So if you hover outside of the image, you see the curved line with the two arrows. Just click and drag and rotate your crop. Now here is what has changed here. They've added the ability to rotate the crop in 15 degree increments. And to do that, all you have to do is hold your shift key down and click and drag and you will get 15 degree increments. So that's a nice new added feature. It's a little change, but I think it's welcome. If you think it's a good thing, let me know in the comment section below. And then of course, after you make your crop, you click apply, but I'm not gonna crop this image. So I will just click on cancel. Another feature of the crop tool is whenever you're using the recovery model, and if you ever use that model, you know it's very slow. So what they've done is, whenever you crop an image, it will only process the crop of the image, not the entire image, which will save a lot of processing time. So that's a new feature and it's a good one. The next feature I wanna point out is they've updated the resize mode, user interface, scale, width, and height all in one space instead of three tabs. So everything's grouped together and it makes it a lot easier for upsizing images. In the resize mode, this is where we choose how we wanna upsize the image 1X, 2X, 4X, or 6X, or custom. And right now I'm set up for custom. And here's where the change takes place. Everything is all right here for a scale factor. In other words, we can type in the scale factor that we want, the custom scale factor or we could go to dimensions and we could change the dimensions we could use pixels we could use inches and say for instance i wanted to make a certain size print i would click on inches and let's say i want the width to be like 16 inches wide and i'll type my return key and now my height will change accordingly and also the scale factor changes now let's say i wanted to print this out on my epson printer and it likes 360 pixels per inch so i could highlight this field and type in 360 you could type tab or you could type your return key and now all these numbers will change accordingly now you'll notice that the width has changed to 13.33 so now I could come here and remember I wanted a 16 inch wide print. I'll highlight this field, type in 16, and then you'll notice that my scale factor and height will change after I type my tab or return key. All but the pixel density, which I wouldn't want to change. I want to keep that at 360. So that's how that works. So custom is really cool, especially if you need to make a custom print size. And it is really nice to be able to change your pixel density here. And then, of course, at this point, I would need to make sure I choose the proper AI model. I could click this little lightning bolt and let Gigapixel pick the model for me. This one, it chooses as low res. This is just a stock image. And then, of course, I could come down here under settings and change any of these settings to whatever I wanted. But right now, it is set for auto settings. At this point, I could go ahead and save off this image and go ahead and print it out because I have my dimension set for me. My pixel density is set. I have the right AI model with the right settings. And now I could just click export image. And now let me show you something new here. 
when you're exporting your images. And that will deal with the color space. Now, right now, I have mine set to save to the original folder. I'm adding the prefix of Gigapixel 7. I'm preserving the input format. And now for color space, I have mine set up for Adobe RGB 1998, or I could click the drop down and change this to whatever I need for my print, or you can add a profile. This is something new. I want to show you this. So we could click add profile. Your file browser will open up and now we can point this to wherever our profiles are saved. In my case, I'm going to click on color sync and double click on this folder called profiles. And here are my different profiles in here. So you could pick any one of these profiles. For instance, uh, let me click on displays and click on this iMac display right here. Click open. And now I've added that profile right there. And I believe it'll remember this profile. So if I don't change it, it will always use this profile. In this case, I don't want this, so I'm going to click the drop down and go back to my Adobe RGB 1998. Now, if you ever want to get rid of a profile, here's all you need to do. Click that drop down for color space and scroll down to you find open profiles folder. Click that and then any profile that you put in to Gigapixel 7 will be here. So I could just click on this and right click it and move it to trash. And now it's gone and now I can X out of here. So that's how that works. When I change that profile, I notice that this changed from format being preserved, the original format to TIFF. I think that's a bug. So keep an eye on that. Let me know if you're having that issue. So I'm going to click the format drop down and go back and click on preserve input format. And now it's JPEG again. So I think that might be a bug. Now, when this is all set up the way you like it, just click save and you'll save it out. I'm going to click cancel for now. The last new feature I want to talk about deals with the recovery model. And that's when you want to add detail to a very small image. Now, the recovery model is kind of unique in a way. I have this screenshot to kind of help you out here. Can your computer run recovery? Your computer will need at least six gigabytes of VRAM to use it properly. Or it may be very, very, very slow or not even work. Now, secondly, what type of images are best for the recovery AI model? Digital web assets, think like AI generated images, small thumbnails that you want to bring out some nice detail in, and 72 PPI images will benefit the most from using recovery. What file size can I use for recovery? At the moment, small files under 1,000 pixels are the best to test the model under 1 megabyte. It is best to upscale these images at least 4 to 6 times their original size for better output results. Now, the beta recovery model has been in Gigapixel 7 already before this update, but here's the change. Now we have seed regeneration, and basically what that means, you can regenerate your result and hopefully get a better result so you can make regenerations and keep trying it till you get the result you like now let's get a look at this recovery model i have this image that i generated in photoshop it's an ai image of a butterfly i'm using the standard ai model and it is upscaled four times as you can see let me go ahead and zoom in to 100 percent and let this render out and there we can see here is the before and here is the after, and it does a really good job at upscaling this image. But now let's check out the recovery beta. I'm going to click recovery beta. Now, right now, this image is 1000 by 1000 pixels. So I'm meeting the criteria for the recovery model. Now, note that I am upscaling this image four times, and I have chosen to use the recovery model. Now, let's take a look at the settings for the recovery model. Right now, I'm set up for auto and it's set to quality. However, you can also use speed. You won't get quite the same results. They'll be good, but not as good as quality. But here's the deal. Speed is a lot quicker. But if you'll notice the run recovery button right here, if I click it, it will take approximately 11 minutes and 42 seconds. So it's a good long amount of time to do this, to upscale it four times in the quality model. But now note, if I change this to speed, it'll now take around one minute and 28 seconds to process and upscale it four times. But it won't be quite as good, but it will be good. I've tested both quality and speed, and they're both very good. Quality is definitely better, and I'll show you here in a sec. 
if you've never played around with the recovery model, I want you to notice something here. We have preview size, and this is really nice because this lets you see a sample of what it's going to look like. So it will upscale just a small area of the image, and I recommend small. If you choose medium or large, it'll take a little bit longer to process. So choose small, and then you see that square box right there. I can hover it anywhere I want in this image, and I can add multiple boxes and sample out different areas of this image. But let's click right here and add this box, and you'll notice it's rendering the preview. And there is the preview right there. Now look at the eye inside of the box. I'm going to hold my space bar down. Here is before, and now here is after. Not a bad result, really good but it will look better in quality, which I'll show you next. Now, remember, you could go ahead and sample different areas, like if I click right here and let this process, now you can see what that area looks like. Again, look at that area in the box. Here's before, and here is after. So this is a nice feature. It really lets you see what kind of a result you'll get without ever running recovery. So you can see if it's going to work or not. But this is speed. Now I'll show you quality. And what I'll do is click clear preview and we'll start from scratch. This time I'll click on quality. And I'm still using the small preview window. I'll hover the preview box over the eye and click. And I'll leave this in real time. You'll see how long it takes. I'll just talk here while it's doing. It does take a little bit of time because, again, I'm using the quality setting, not the speed setting. So it takes a bit of time. Now, I'm using a 2019 iMac with 64 gigabytes of RAM and a relatively fast processor. So it takes a bit of time here. And there it's done. So look at the butterfly's eye. Here is before. I'm just holding the space bar down on my keyboard. And here is the after. So pretty darn good. Now, if I were to click Run Recovery right now, it says 11 minutes and 42 seconds, but however, I, it's been longer than that for me. It's been around 16 minutes, so this is not 100% accurate, so it'll take a while, so I'm not going to process this, but I can tell you, it's going to look like what you see in that window here. And by the way, you see this detail slider here? I can go ahead and adjust this. I'll drag it the whole way to the right, see the extra detail coming in, or I could drag it to the left, and you could see what the result would be like at different detail levels. So I'll take it the whole way up to the right. And that's pretty good. It's probably too much. I'll pull it back a little bit. And next, I would have to click Run Recovery and wait out the time for it to go ahead and recover. And it will appear right here in the Gigapixel interface, and I can see my result. But here's the new feature. If I don't like it, I could click Run Recovery again, and it would get a new seed. And that just basically means it's going to do a whole new interpretation of this recovery. And then I could see if I like it. And if I like it, all I have to do is click Export One Image, and that'll open up the Export dialog and set all your settings the way you want it. Click Save, and it will save instantly. You don't have to wait for it to reprocess. Now, every time you hit Run Recovery to see if you can get a better result, you're going to have to wait that 11 to 16 minutes, depending on your computer. It might be an hour. I don't know. It really depends on your computer. I went ahead and opened up that original image, which is 850 by 1280 pixels. And now, right now it's in the uh, standard AI model. Let me click on recovery beta. I get this warning message. It says recovery is not optimized for large images. You can still use recovery for images larger than a thousand by a thousand pixels, but it will take significantly longer to render, which may affect your system hardware. So I can click on continue. Even though this is over a thousand by a thousand pixels, I can still try to recover its details with the recovery model. And you'll notice here it's saying large image. It's giving me a warning. But if we come down to settings and we'll notice here in quality, it's going to take roughly 12 minutes and 42 seconds, probably more like around 17 to 18 minutes, really, to be honest with you. If I click on run recovery. So you can use it on larger images, but it might not be worth it because it could take a really long time. It could take hours. You never know. It depends how large that image actually is. Well, there you go, everyone. This was a first look at the latest version of Topaz Gigapixel. This was version 7.3. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. 
and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.